Getting spots on your clothes when you cook just seems to happen no matter how careful you are. Bacon sizzles and spits and you get a grease spot. You frost a cake and you find chocolate on your sleeve. We bought seven top-selling laundry stain removers to find a reliable weapon against cooking-related stains. We used white cotton t-shirts and yards of blue cotton fabric designed for button-down shirts. And we chose the toughest food stains we could find. Melted dark chocolate, hot bacon grease, yellow mustard, strong black tea, a puree of chipotle chilies and adobo sauce, and pureed frozen blueberries. We put identical amounts of these six foods on each t-shirt and piece of blue fabric. And then we designated one shirt and fabric for each product and treated the stains and compared the results. Now the first thing we noticed is that most of these products work in a really similar way. You put it on the spot, you rub it in, you wait briefly, and then you launder. Aside from giving very, very specific time frames for waiting, one to three minutes or three to five minutes and so on, the instructions were surprisingly vague and breezy, just spray and wash. Only one product worked completely differently. It's a powder. You dissolve it in water and you pre-soak the whole garment from one to six hours before laundering. We tested them all three times. First, a former industry insider told us that when a laundry product gives instructions with a range of times or other factors, the shortest or lowest end of the range is still supposed to work. So we started with the absolute least amount of time and effort. After applying the stains and letting them soak in for 15 minutes, we used each stain remover and waited or soaked the shortest time frame recommended. We did only light scrubbing with our hands or with scrubby caps if they had them, and then laundered them in cold water. As a control, we stained and laundered a t-shirt and piece of blue fabric without treating the stains at all, just to see if treating stains is even necessary. And for each wash, we used a measured amount of an ordinary laundry detergent and washed the shirt and fabric with the same pair of plain white cotton bath towels. Now label after label on these bottles promised to get the stains out the first time and even offered guaranteed results. But when we pulled them out of the washer, we had one thought, so much for guarantees, because most of these stains were still clearly visible. A few products took out the bacon grease, but that was it. The worst made the whole shirt look dingy and brown. Our only consolation was that the untreated control shirt and fabric looked even worse. But clearly, the least effort approach wasn't enough. So for our second round of testing, we stepped it up. We painted the stains on a different part of each shirt and fabric, waited the same 15 minutes to let them soak in, but then deliberately went to the high end of the range of the instructions. We waited or soaked for the maximum time. We rubbed and scrubbed vigorously with a brush instead of our hands. And we used hot water in the wash. We also went back and retreated that first set of stains using our new vigorous approach. And those small changes made a big difference. While three of these seven products still failed across the board, the other four showed some progress, erasing various stains. One product that had done a little better than most in the first round pulled ahead of the pack. This one removed all the previous stains and virtually all the newly applied ones. Now, so far, so good, but treating fresh stains isn't always realistic. Sometimes you don't notice a spot till laundry day. So for our third and final round, we stained the fabric and shirts and we waited a full 72 hours before treating them. We scrubbed vigorously and we washed in hot water. And once again, that front runner from the first two rounds outperformed the rest. It left the blue fabric bright and clean. The white t-shirt still had one faint orange mark from the chipotles that had dried on for 72 hours, but all the other stains were gone. And with one final round of treatment, even that last spot virtually disappeared. So what made the difference? Our winner was the one product that had you pre-soak the garment instead of just spritzing and rubbing the spot. And it was the only one that used sodium percarbonate, which is a combination of sodium carbonate and hydrogen peroxide. When it's dissolved in water, sodium percarbonate releases oxygen, which bubbles up and helps lift the stain, while the hydrogen peroxide provides color-safe bleaching. These particular ingredients are most effective on stains from natural substances, making it perfect for our cooking stains. And our winner also contains surfactants, which disrupt the surface of stain molecules, opening the door for water and cleaning agents to get in. But what was up with the others? They all use surfactants, but their main approach is to attack stains with enzymes. Enzymes chomp the stain's big water insoluble molecules into small soluble pieces. But like picky eaters, each type of enzyme targets only a very specific type of stain. For instance, protease only works on protein-based stains or amylase on carbohydrate stains. So manufacturers kind of throw in a scattershot assortment of different enzymes to make them more all-purpose. But those random sets of enzymes in different products only took out one or two stains on each shirt, 
while our winner removed the full spectrum of stains. In the end, we can only recommend one product, OxyClean Versatile Stain Remover. Now sure, spritz and wash products are easier, but if they don't work, what's the point? Next time we stain our favorite shirt in the kitchen, we'll grab a bucket and OxyClean.